What happens when you take one of my favorite, more affordable integrated amplifiers, the Audiolab 6000A Play, and send it off to graduate school? You get the brand new flagship integrated amplifier, the 9000A. <laughs> While Audio Lab's design DNA is clear as day throughout their lineup, the 9000A is not an update to the 6000A Play. It is its very own thing. The 9000A's Class AB amplifier churns out 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms, 160 watts into 4. It has 6 analog audio inputs, which include an all-new phono preamp, a single balanced input, as well as an input allowing for the 9000A to be used as a power amp when paired with a home theater system. There's also a single preamp out, which can be used to connect to a more powerful third-party amp or run two subwoofers. Just note that when driving a subwoofer, there is no internal bass management with the 9000A. And like with the 6000A, the 9000 is incredibly flexible, offering a strict preamp mode when paired with a separate amplifier. It has a host of digital audio inputs as well, and they're all tied to an internal ESS9038 Pro DAC, capable of handling signals up to 32768, depending on your connection. The Audio Lab offers full MQA decoding from Tidal, as well as Bluetooth Aptex HD. But unlike the 6000A Play, no internal streaming, so no PlayFi or Blue OS. For all of the specs, we're going to leave a link in the description. Time to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. New Year's means New Year's resolutions, and while most fail, there's one change you can make in 2023 that doesn't require you to get, say, a gym membership or change your diet. Make 2023 the year you finally do something about your thinning hair with Keeps. Two out of three men experience some form of hair loss by their mid-30s. I know I did. But we can do something about it with Keeps. Two years ago, I got proactive about my hair loss, and I got the care I needed to treat my thinning hair without having to leave my home, visit a doctor, or even go to a pharmacy, thanks to Keeps' subscription-based service. I'm so happy I found a plan that worked for me to help to reverse my thinning hair and even stimulate new hair growth, and I am thrilled with the results. Hair loss stops with Keeps. Try it now for yourself. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson, or just click the link in the description. That's keeps.com slash Andrew Robinson. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video, and now back to it. Available in white or black, the build quality of this amplifier is exceptional. Everything from the binding posts to the three chunky control knobs scream quality and feel good to the touch. While the large color screen, which is a carryover from the Omnia, is nice and very legible from a distance, I would have preferred to see the 9000A get a graphical refresh rather than borrowing all of the digital meters and UI designs from the less expensive Omnia. We tested the Audio Lab using four different sets of loudspeakers, the Mission 700s, Triangles Borea Towers, Q Acoustic Concept 50s, and the more difficult to drive Technics G90 Mark II speakers, what with their lower sensitivity and nominal 4 ohm load. All four speakers paired very well with the Audio Lab, with the Technics and Q Acoustic speakers being my favorite of the four. We streamed Apple Music through our Apple TV 4K using the Sony X95K or the TCL XL Series TV, and it all worked pretty well. The Audio Lab does not have an HDMI input, which is tragic considering this is a new product. In order to connect the Audio Lab to our televisions, we used an HDMI to optical adapter, which Christy will link to below. To test the 9000A's built in phono preamp, we used our reference turntable, the Audio Technica LP140, which was fitted with our favorite Ortofon cartridge. When it comes to sound quality, the 9000A epitomizes neutrality. It has a very linear response, very confident power delivery, well-dampened bass, a mildly fuller mid-range with an open and breathy treble. And once again, Audiolab swooped in and saved another review. Like the 6000A did with the PSB Synchronies two years ago, the 9000A proved to be the unsuck it amp, single-handedly saving the Mission 700s from what could have been a negative review when we paired them with the Rotel S14. Regardless of the speaker pairing, however, the 9000A is not an amplifier you seek out if you're looking for a great deal of flavor or coloration. The Audio Lab does not change the tone of your speakers, but it can help to unlock hidden potential within their performance. The drum kit featured on Collective Soul's December was more defined with greater separation and dimension than what I'm used to hearing from amps hovering at around a similar asking price. Texture, nuance, and control Name of the game when it comes to the Audio Lab's bass performance, and this was especially apparent when listening with the Technics new G90 speakers. 
When it comes to the mid-range, the 9000A doesn't really affect or alter the natural timbre of instruments or vocals, but it may prove eye-opening when it comes to hearing more detail and separation. Going back to Collective Soul's December, the multiple vocal stems within that track were far more apparent and with greater space existing between the performers than through lesser amplifiers. The Audio Lab really digs in and it kind of pulls apart the layers of the song, giving you more of an exploded view of the music. Performance cues such as an artist swaying behind their microphone are more easily detected. You could hear this clear as day in Alanis Morissette's MTV Unplugged album, something other amps kind of fail to do. As for the treble, I do not feel the 9000A alters the signal, but it definitely takes just a hint of sheen off the top, resulting in an airy performance, but not an outright or overly bright one. Piano trills throughout the bridge of Lady Blackbird's Fool Out of You were vibrant and they had a good deal of sparkle, but the sometimes trace elements of distortion or worse, clipping, were nowhere to be found. Now, whether you want to chalk that up to the amp itself or its DAC, I don't really care. The experience you get is better for it, and I appreciate that. But where the 9000A really excels is definitely in its soundstage and dynamics. Soundstage depth, it's superb, arguably better than width, though this sense of vertical scale, especially when listening through the Technic speakers, impressed and surprised me the most. Ultimately, this height is likely the Technic's doing and not the Audio Lab. Nevertheless, it's nice to know that if your speakers can recreate a cavernous soundstage, the Audio Lab isn't going to rob them of their capabilities. Now, like with the bass and midrange, the Audio Lab's separation and placement of instruments throughout the soundstage was focused and sure footed. Dynamically, this amp is grounded in reality, so I wouldn't classify it as explosive. It is a sound that builds rather than snaps. The amp is very well balanced and natural, so as you turn things up, the sound doesn't thin, nor does one aspect of the amp's performance take over, meaning the treble doesn't suddenly become more present or the focus. So if you can absorb the 9000A's asking price, there isn't much I feel you need to be worried about performance-wise. I mean, even the built-in phono preamp is pretty stellar, up there with, in my opinion, the Technics SUG700. For many of you, this amp is going to check numerous boxes, but for me, I would have loved to see the inclusion of HDMI, not to mention updated graphics for the screen, as well as perhaps a more robust user interface. I love that Audio Lab has various modes, including a strict preamp mode, but the lack of user adjustments, like tone controls, continues to be a glaring omission, not only for the 9000A, but for Audio Lab on the whole. I don't miss PlayFi, and I have a feeling most of you won't either. Nevertheless, at nearly three grand. I can understand if you feel the 9000A isn't quite the value the other Audio Lab products have been in the past. Speaking of other products, the 9000A is most comparable to the Roxana Tessa Streaming Amp, Technics SUG700 Mark II, Rotel's S14, and the Marantz Model 40N, and of course, the Audiolab 6000A Play. Now, when it comes to value, the feature-rich Roxana and Marantz amps come out ahead. But focusing our attention on the Atessa, which has a slightly more lively and dynamic presentation, both the Audio Lab and Roxon are confident, sure-footed amplifiers that exhibit just startling amounts of control over speakers, and they sound far more powerful than their specs would lead you to believe. Now, I prefer the ergonomics and overall design of the Audio Lab, but both these amps are phenomenal, and they deserve your attention. At its price, the Marantz Model 40N, it just can't be touched, giving listeners virtually everything they could want from a modern two-channel integrated, including HDMI. Features aside, I prefer the sound of the Audio Lab. I know. The 40N sounds fuller and less detailed compared to the 9000A. The Marantz makes day-to-day -day livability a breeze, which I absolutely prefer, but I'm not going to lie. I sometimes wish the Marantz could sound like the Audio Lab. As for the Technics SUG700 Mark II, this is a bit of a toss-up. The Technics is going to come across as a little more nimble, a bit more responsive, and tonally just a little more smooth around the edges. Which one I prefer, again, it's probably going to come down to my mood on any given day. The two amps are that close performance-wise. But compared to the brand spanking new Rotel S14, the 9000A is a little bit more expensive, and it lacks Rotel's internal streaming capability, but head-to-head... -head, the Audio Lab destroys the Rotel. In a four-way mashup, the Rotel consistently scored last in our test. The Rotel lacks the resolution, the control, the separation, I could go on for a while, of the 9000A. In all honesty, the costly S14 is actually closer to the performance of the 6000A Play than the 9000A. So the only remaining question has to be, 
How much better is the 9000A compared to the less expensive 6000A or 6000A Play? Make no mistake, the 9000A is the superior amp, but the 6000A is not left in the dust. If the 9000A represents a perfect 10 for Audio Lab, the 6000 is still going to podium with a solid 8. The 9000A takes all of the things I loved about the 6000 and elevates them. But the sound of the 6000A wasn't exactly what I felt needed addressing. And for nearly twice the cost, the 9000A doesn't give you twice the sound quality, never mind twice the features or user experience, which in this review is kind of the biggest disappointment. I love the sound of the new 9000A. It is everything that I've come to love about Audio Lab. It's beautiful, it's insanely well built, and an easy amp to recommend, all things considered. But given that Audio Lab brought this product to market in late 2022, I expected improved features or options, something I don't think Audio Lab is going to be surprised to hear just based on our conversations about their future products. Sonically, the 9000A is a home run. No complaints from me. But its lack of more modern features in 2023 is what's going to keep it from being the game changer I think they want it to be. So that's it. That is now my take on Audio Lab's brand new 9000A integrated amplifier. But before we go, what do you think of it? Well, can we can we just talk about the design for a second? Yeah. I mean, because this amp is gorgeous. It is. That silvery white finish. It's oh, mm. I love it. It's just gives it this really modern yet sophisticated look and and i absolutely love that the display is off center mm -hmm. um it just freshens it up i i which one had the this display was in the center that was the omnia the omnia okay yeah um anyway i looking back I, i'm like wow this looks so much better than that yeah i have to say despite the omnia and the 9000a having the exact same display the fact that the 9000A has that thick piece of uh, acrylic in front of it where the Omnia just kind of has, if memory serves, it's just the natural screen surface of the LCD, that little bit of, that little bit of gloss mm, helps, yeah, helps a lot. Oh, mm. oh, another thing about the display, I don't think I made this clear in the video or the review, uh, totally defeatable. No, you did not make that clear. Totally defeatable. Because I didn't know that was yeah. a thing, but... I like it. I yeah. know that you had some complaints about, you know, them using the the uh, previous graphics and stuff. Yeah. And I and I totally get what you're saying and mm -hmm. I mean, I always feel that if a company wants to sort of quiet the uh the masses who may complain about price increases and mm -hmm. whatnot, it's always better to put your absolute best forward foot forward. And give some, give them something new. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of companies, not just Audio Lab, are continue to fall short. Um, as far as how I feel, the Audio Lab ranks w along with the um, the amps we tested. Yeah, in, okay. in the comparison section. Okay, you're gonna give me your now. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna weigh in on okay. my thoughts right. now. I really feel like the Roxon the Technics and the Audio Lab 9000A are all very, very close. Mm -hmm. And you, the viewer watching, I, I honestly don't think you're going to be disappointed with any of the three. No, I, um, I don't think it's going to so. come down to a couple of things, um, like looks being one. Now, in terms of sound, I think that the Roxon has just something special yeah. that, um, the audio lab doesn't quite have, I can't really put my finger on it, but mm -hmm. there's just a sound it gives me that I prefer. Okay. Very similar to the Technics. Um, yeah. I, I think I even said in one of our Technics reviews that I felt that the audio lab was the closest. The Roxon. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, the, it's fine. It's fine. That's that how the Roxon, yeah, that the Roxon <laughs> was in the most similar to the Technics yeah. in terms of sound quality. Because both the Technics and the Roxon have a slightly more lively, call it agile sound. Just a little bit more nimble. And that's it. A little bit more nimble, just a little bit more forward. That's kind of it. But it, it's noticeable, especially when you start A being Roxon or Technics against Audio Lab. That's when you go, oh, okay. Um, but again, it, it, it comes down to where you're splitting hairs. Yeah, you, you really, really are. are. And look, we are, we have a, 
um, what's the word? Like we come from a, we, it's, we come, we come at this from a very privileged position because we have the ability to line up four or five different amplifiers on our bench and literally sit there and go from the one amp to another, listening to the same song over and over again to really start to determine how they are different. Um, so if you're not able to do that, don't feel like you're going to be missing out. If you just pick one, just be happy and just pick it and go with it. I kind of disagree with you in your, in your review, you said that you felt that the audio lab and the Technics phono preamp was like basically very similar. Comparable. Um, I disagree. I think, I, and I'm sure this is going to ruffle some feathers. <laughs> oh, God. I personally think if you are true, truly in vinyl, the Technics is the only amp to get. Um, and I know that it digitizes the signal. I don't give a crap. <laughs> I think that makes it better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone, everything, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the tried and the do- died in the wool just like the oh, little man. brains exploded it's okay um you can feel differently i just disagree with you wholeheartedly okay. um technics there is just something about what they do to the sound of 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 records that i personally prefer so that would be why i would strongly point you towards the Technics, either the G700 Mark II or the R1000. Hmm. Um, the only t- problem is that you can't get anything from Technics. <laughs> they, um, Perpetually out of stock. <laughs> or just not available. They're just not available. Or they're out of stock, or it's on back order. It's it's a real problem, Yeah. Um, which could make the decision a lot easier for, for you, because if you can't get it, you know, yeah. on to the next thing. Yeah. Now, I would put the Mor- Morantz next. Okay. Um, I mean, it has HDMI. It makes our life yeah. so much easier. Yeah, uh, yeah. It did win product of the year. At, or wait, no, amp of the year, didn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it did. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's worthy of the praise. It has everything that anyone could ever really want, um, including power and the ability to drive even difficult to drive speakers. So it's really hard to fault. The 6000A, I still think it's fantastic. Yeah. And I can imagine it's probably going to be the one that a lot of people still choose to go purchase. Mm -hmm. Uh, At $1,700 for the play, you get streaming, you get everything. Yeah. Um, And the only thing you don't get is HDMI. Um, so I can definitely see people going that route. Uh, the 6,000A, the non, the uh, non-play version, the non-streaming yeah. version is $1,200. No brainer. Which makes it even harder to look past. I mean, yeah. I think that that's going to be Audio Lab. Audio Lab's biggest competition is with, from itself. And then lastly, the Rotel S14. Yeah. I mean, what were they thinking? Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's the, (sighs) look, if you have the funds and you are really like, you are like, I love Rotel and Mm -hmm. I really love the Rotel sound. Well, for starters, I don't think you get it with the S14. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they've done to that particular amplifier, but in my opinion, it doesn't sound like the Rotel, the Rotel uh, products that I have experienced based on like, for example, the Rotel A11 Tribute, the 1592 Mark II, the mm-hmm. Rotel, oh my God, what whatever, whatever receiver, receiver is called. Yeah. Um, and even the Michi products, those have a very specific sound, mm-hmm. um, one that I like, but I don't think that the S14 sounds anything like those. It's kind of um, yeah. vague and and not very articulate. Not, it's just kind of it's it's boring. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. That's it. All right, guys. That's now our review of the Audio Lab 9000A Play. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you. It's pretty simple. What do you think about Audio Lab's choices with the 9000A? Did they do enough? Not enough? 
I'm curious. So let's have a respectful conversation, but a conversation nonetheless. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we both do here. And we thank all of you very, very much for doing that. Speaking of thanks, I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Keeps. Uh, to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson. And again, thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.